at Alabama Tape Production. Welcome back to Take It On Sports, everybody, or welcome for your first time if you're just tuning in. I am TD, that's Greg over there, and you have tuned in to the world's premier sports podcast. Greg, how you doing this week? I am good, sir. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, let's start, as always, with college football and just another great day of football yesterday. Didn't look like much of a lineup coming in, but the games keep delivering. Um we can start really quick. We quickly with the home team, of course, Alabama. Big win over Vanderbilt. Uh, is there anything we can really learn from that game, though? I mean, I guess what we. I mean, it's yeah, it's not too much to learn from it. I mean, I liked how the offense, looked, you know, the way it was spread out in the first half. I mean, definitely looked better than what it has. That everybody seemed to be on the same page, and you know, everybody's been real critical of Burton's uh, since in the last two games there, and he, you know. Looked good last night. I thought, you know, had some some numbers finally. So I I liked what I saw. But yeah, you're right. I mean, next week we'll start the test. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, big road game at Arkansas next week. Uh, much tougher defense they've seen the past couple of weeks. So we'll see how much uh, of an improvement they've made since the Texas game. Uh, we'll move across the state to the Plains and <laughs> Auburn. Woo. Another just Auburn Jesus pulls it out. Um, <laughs> if you didn't watch it, y'all, it was just a mess of a game. Auburn went up 14 0 in the first quarter. Missouri came back, tied it for halftime. Then the second half was nothing but punts <laughs> until the very end. Missouri gets down to the what three yard line or so, so, and then takes two knees and plays for the field goal. And what's the kicker do? He misses it. This is what you get for playing for a field goal with a college exactly. kicker. Then they get into overtime. Uh, they're, Missouri's running in for the game-winning touchdown. Guy reaches the ball out, drops the ball right before <laughs> the goal line. And like I said, Auburn Jesus keeps that ball inbound oh, somehow. Man. The Tigers of Auburn recover, win the game by Brian Harson. maybe another week. Uh, and as we said uh, wow. last week, that – this is their tough stretch of after this, they have LSU at home, then at Georgia, at Ole Miss and Arkansas at home. So, I mean, just talk about it, Greg. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't even know how they won the game, honestly. Like, uh, you know, I was uh, my, watching the game, looking at my timeline and, you know, all the Auburn fans, F this, fire the coach. This is, <laughs> and then, you know, it's over. You think this kid had missed a kick all year. And within 30 yards, of course, you go for, for that tie, and that that's what you get, like you said. Um, and just the fact that, I mean, the man busted the long run at the, from Mizzou at the end and can't get in the end zone. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, just that <laughs> Jordan Hare weirdness we've experienced at yeah. first hand. It's just <laughs> there's some voodoo goes on there. And, man, uh, but, yeah, like we both just said, you can't play for the field goal in college. I don't care how good your kicker is. It's just college kickers are just not. And especially, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're Mizzou. No one's expecting anything from you. You're on the road. <laughs> you have nothing to lose. If I'm going to lose a game, I would much rather say my coach went for it. We didn't get it. We move on to play another game instead of we play for the field goal. We still lost. Yeah, I mean, get first and go from three yard line. Take a couple of shots, just running yep. up the middle two or I'm three times. I'm gonna run three, you know, three like, plays or something. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, and then it's cowardly yeah. to a degree, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's aggressive, you know. Like Herm said, you play <laughs> exactly. to win the game. Like I don't understand. Go out there and play to don't win. Don't understand. Um, it. Yeah, uh, we'll stay in the SEC. Tennessee got a big win over their rival. Florida is only their second win over the Gators in the last 18 meetings of the series. Only the fifth win this century. So uh, time to start uh, maybe taking the ball seriously here. They get a bye next week. They go on the road to LSU, and then it's the third Saturday in October. But a good win for Hendon Hooker, Josh Heupel, and the Vols. Uh, Yeah, man, uh, 
maybe he's finally that program's finally back to some sort of relevance in the SEC. Well, you know, definitely uh, at least on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, very very impressive. I mean, without their top receiver Tillman was out. And they still put up numbers. Uh, Brew McCoy, the uh, transfer from USC. I mean, he did a, he put up uh, numbers. And Hendon Hooker, I mean, running the ball, passing the ball. I mean, he looked legit yesterday. Um, I mean, they haven't seen a quarterback like that at Tennessee for for a while there. But that defense is going to be what is going to be their downfall long term. I mean. Anthony Richardson put up numbers like we haven't seen all season. So, I mean, <laughs> kudos to him for, you know, going on the road and doing that. But I think it says a lot about that Vols defense as well. <laughs> yeah, they'll definitely get tested after their bye week. Maybe they'll have a, you know, they'll have the bye week to tweak some things. But uh, we'll see once they really start getting right. the meat of their schedule. But, you know, they uh, playing offense. I mean, they got the win there. You know, they can really. I guess that's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, you got the win, a big rivalry win. I mean, big rivalry win. win and I, I know. When Florida got that onside kick at the end, I could have only imagined how those fans felt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we didn't see any mustard bottles, no mustard. though. So. Yeah. Probably saving that Held for the... the mustard yesterday. All right, let's uh, move to last night's big upset. Kansas State knocks out or knocks off Oklahoma and in their unbeaten run earlier. And that's just. That is one of those series that Oklahoma absolutely dominates. If you look at the overall record, it's like 77 to yeah. 20 or something like that. Those line. But it feels like, especially since we've been to college, just Kansas State every couple of years or so just has this huge upset win over Kansas State, or excuse me, over Oklahoma. So I actually went down a weird little rabbit hole last night and researched it some. So they've beaten them five times this century, starting with that – uh. Big win while we were in school where they just smashed them in the oh, Big 12 yeah. championship okay. game. Remember, oh, Darren, Darren Sproles, Sproles. The game, right? He ran oh, all man. over yeah. them. And then they've had a couple wins around like 20. I think they won back-to-back in like 2012, 2013. They got a couple wins uh, later on. So, like I said, I went down a weird little rabbit hole last night, researched it. Here's the thing about it. All these wins seem huge, and you're like, oh, man, they cost Oklahoma the, the Big 12 title or their chances at a national title. But for they really don't, actually, when you look no. at it. So that 2003 game, that was a year that they got in over USC and the BCS I mean, championship when they game you, and LSU, lost to LSU. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow. don't know. We still don't know how that happened because USC's loss was early in the year to Cal that yeah. season. And, big, you know, Oklahoma got smashed in nah. the Big 12 title game. No, BCS computer said, no, nah, they're still <laughs> one of the two. Then LSU went exactly. and beat them. And then – uh, what did I look up? So three times of those five games, three of them, they still went on to win the Big 12 right. title. Although one of that was kind of bullshit because they were co-champs with Kansas State. So you're like, uh, hey, Big 12, <laughs> you know, tiebreaker, wow. head-to-head thing. Uh, one of them was just part of a uh, like a five-loss season Oklahoma had in like 2013 yeah. or so. So it really wasn't, you know, didn't make a difference either way. And then one was that 2003 right. game where it cost them the Big 12 title, but didn't cost them a shot at the national title. So it's just one of those weird series of, man, Manhattan is like a snake pit for the Sooners. Really but in the end, it kind of never really matters. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird whether they've won like three or four in this series. But like, as you said, it doesn't matter. I mean, when they lost in 2019, I mean, to Kansas State, I mean, they still went to Sooners with Jalen, still went to the playoffs. Um, but the the craziest part of last night was not how they won, but just the way they dominated the game. I mean, this is a team the week prior had, what, 10 points against Tulane, but can go on the road to Norman and drop 41. <laughs> The craziness of college football. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those sports. Oh, sorry, I'm not mic down. Just one of those, yeah, sports. It goes to show you just sometimes <laughs> you never know what the hell's going on in college yeah. football. But so Oklahoma, I think that I saw the AP poll. They dropped about 10 spots or so yeah, big, today. Big drop from. Uh, but, but we'll see, you know, how it actually affects them. Uh Going forward, you know, they still kind of got an easy schedule and they still got the talent that they could still turn around yeah. and run through the rest of their and schedule. And K State might drop a game or two exactly. somewhere. And 
Who knows? Yeah, but the yeah, Sooners, yeah. I mean, it seems like Iowa State and Kansas State, they're like the their kryptonite. <laughs> every every other year, it seems recently, does those two teams, for whatever reason, are really. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on to another big upset last or yesterday down in Miami. Oh, my God. Woo. <laughs> Middle Tennessee State just went in to what is it, Hard Rock Stadium <laughs> and beat the ever living tar out of Miami. Just all over, like From threw it, start ran it, just, to just beat them, just beat them up. <laughs> Got paid a, a mil and a half to go in there and beat the Canes. Uh, so, my question is to you, man, I guess is. Is Miami that roster just that thin on talent? Maybe we haven't realized. Maybe we kind of hyped up. You know, we think that because of all that talent that is in South Florida high school ball, but it's not necessarily automatically going to Miami. But we hyped up Cristobal. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it's just that roster is not that thin. And then a uh, second part of that is maybe, and not comparing Cristobal to Nick Saban, but maybe it's kind of similar to that first year under Nick Saban where. You know, the infamous, they finished, what, 7-6 and six right. that year? That Everyone remembers the UL Monroe right. loss. They actually lost their last four regular season yeah. games before, you know, winning the Independence Bowl. Uh, and a lot of that season was just Saban instilling his culture right. there and what the program's going to be about and kind of weeding out guys that didn't really fit the new idea of what the team should be. So, you know, on a – give me a scale of 1 to 10, how, you know – how much should Miami fans panic? Well, first, it only seems like it's like 20 Miami fans. I mean, they can't, they can't get fans in that stadium for any reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the only thing I can say is it's more the same for Miami. I, I think that's why you, they would panic as a fan base because it's always after they lose that first big game, they fall apart. They lose A&M, they fall apart. So I think from here, it's just how do they rebound? But like as you said, I mean, Chris Ball is getting his culture in there. I mean, we know he had a great re- has had a great recruiting class, but, I mean, those guys are not on the team right now. So, you know, he's still building the, building things. And so I think uh, you have to look at the long term. And But as a fan base, I mean, I see exactly why why they would panic just because, I mean, yeah, it's it's okay to lose the A and M at Kyle Field, but to turn around the following week, it doesn't matter. You know, it was a tough loss, but to get blasted from start to finish by Middle Tennessee State, not even a good mid major team. That's the whole thing. Like, my goodness, like how like where and that can't happen. <laughs> but No, it cannot. Yeah, it's a not a good loss there. Um so we'll see, you know, that's it's one of these things. How do they react to it? Exactly. A couple bad games in a row offense, you know, they benched, benched Van Dyke yeah. uh, yesterday. So we'll see how he responds to that, how the whole team responds and, you know, how Cristobal, you know, gets it, gets them yeah, going. For sure. Uh, we'll stay in the ACC. Clemson and Wake Forest played a classic. Man, yesterday. that was a classic. shootout in Winston-Salem. The Tigers pulled it out in the end, went in an overtime. Uh, I think double, double overtime, overtime actually. Yeah. yeah, so the offense finally got going. DJ looked, uh, I think, had his best passing game since that first one he started against Notre Dame a couple well, seasons it's ago. Definitely a, definitely a decent game for him there. That offense, both offenses, it was amazing. <laughs> Back oh, yeah. and forth. Sam Hartman just slinging. Man. Sam Hartman, Wake Forest quarterback, uh, ACC record six touchdown passes. And that's against a, a great defense, I mean. Clemson has not been known for the defense. I also carried them last year, and I mean they've, you know, still a top top defense in the country, even with the transition and coaches and stuff. And yeah, I mean he took apart that defense from start to finish. I mean, but you know it's good to see him back there. You know he started off the season with the blood clot there. Where folks weren't sure when he was going to come back, and he's come back gangbusters in the three games he's been. Sam Hartman is. Uh, Definitely a special talent, and you know you hit in a game like that. And you know there's an outside just watching. You hate to see someone lose. It's just so fun to watch. But mm-hmm. for sure, yeah. Um, 
you know, yeah, maybe some questions about that great Clemson D, though. You know, we'll see how much of it was Wake Forest and Sam Hartman and how much maybe they got some holes to plug and they get NC State next week and their big-time quarterback. Uh, So, you know, that's a big test for them. And then on the 15th of October, they have to go to Tallahassee to face the Red Hot Seminoles all of a sudden, 4 0. So we'll see what, uh, We'll see where Clemson, if they're full back, yeah. you know, if last year was just an anomaly, or we'll see if maybe they still got some lingering problems on that roster. Uh, let's see. Let's go out west real quick. USC struggled. A tough win over Oregon State. Anything to read from this, or is it just the blip in Corvallis, which is a place that always seems to give the Trojans You know, I, I, I'm going to take it as Corvallis more than anything. Uh, you know, that was the one you looked at and like, oh, they're going to Corvallis. It's – a later game. It's, I mean, it's not. It's on the Pac-12 network. I mean, I couldn't even watch the game because I have YouTube TV, not one of the channels. So, I kind of listen to it on the uh, through the Sirius XM, just following it. And so, but I mean, the the thing I guess is you could get from the game the offense struggle, but the defense looked good for USC. Four 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 interceptions there, kept them in the game, and that's been the question. I guess if you take a positive from it. Not only, I mean, got the tough win. and We've seen them struggle in Corvallis. Uh, but, you know, the defense looked a lot better this week. For sure. Uh, yeah, I was in the same boat as you. Also have YouTube TV, which is normally yeah. great. Uh, I was like, no Pac-12 you know, network. I love it during I mean, sports season. I don't season. go to it much. I mean, it's not a channel I'm looking for often. But I thought, you know, I had the Big Ten. I got the SEC. Surely I had the Pac-12. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we got the exactly. ACC, Big Ten, and SEC network on there, but I guess the Pac-12 is not part of that ESPN family. Yeah, so, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, YouTube TV, great. If you guys want to throw us a sponsorship, yeah. we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> staying out, let's see, uh, Joe. Just to finish up about USC, they get Arizona State and then Washington State at home, and then they got a big showdown with at Utah on the fifteenth. So we'll learn more yeah, then. Until um, then. Yeah. See how they bounce right. back. Let's stay in the Pac-12 for a couple teams. Ooh, that crazy, crazy Oregon-Washington State fourth Man, quarter. Crazy. Uh, I had actually kind of zoned out of that game. It looked like Washington State, the Cougars are just kind of controlling that one all over Oregon. Then Oregon scored 21 points in about a two-and-a-half-minute span. Took a, what, a 10-point lead, and then Washington got the very last play backdoor cover for, <laughs> for the gamblers out there that Oregon – Minus six and a half did not hit. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of craziness. There. A lot of bad beats hey, on that be. one. But uh that's a good win by Oregon because Wazoo is kinda like Corvallis, you know, Pullman is a weird place, kinda like Lubbock, yeah. which we'll get to. Uh, you know, just one of these weird, weird places, man. <laughs> uh strange things happen out there. So that's a good win for Oregon. Definitely a good win. I mean, you you know, this is a Two, you know, two solid wins in a row for Oregon. I mean, they beat BYU solidly last week. I mean, then this week they go into um, Pullman get the get the win. I mean, Washington State. Not, I wouldn't say a down team. I mean, they two weeks ago went in the Camp Randall and slapped Wisconsin around all games. So I mean, definitely a good win. And you know, it's it's weird. Like Bo Nix. You see that, you know, the end of the game, you see that dude is definitely talented, but it's just uh, something mentally, I mean, he just can't get it, give it every week. But if he would be able to give it every week, he could be something special. But I guess that's why he's where he's at right now. <laughs> for sure, yeah. He's a, a maddening <laughs> quarterback to follow if you're a fan of a team he's playing for. Because he's, yeah, like you said, up, down, up, down. He's a roller coaster. Um. <laughs> Staying one last thing about the Pac-12, is it time we need to pay some serious attention to Washington? The Huskies are looking strong 4-0, and they are kind of running through teams. They uh, followed up last week's big win against Michigan State with another big win this week. Uh, Huskies looking kind of real. They are looking looking good. I mean, this was a team last year was pathetic, pitiful. And, I mean, a uh, new coach, uh, DeBoer, has come in there and, Brian, what what he had at um, was he at Fresno State, and I mean he had to have it mm-hmm. missed the beat from from the transition. I mean they are just playing ball in Washington. Yeah, definitely a team I wouldn't want to play right now. Hot, yeah, for sure, 
forty to twenty two win over Stanford. And granted, Stanford is a little bit down, but uh, you know, hey, that's you, you win your games. You got to win exactly. your games, and they did. Mm-hmm. And they're scoring a lot of points. Scoring points, winning convincingly. Get, Can't ask for more. <laughs> mm-hmm. They go to UCLA this Friday. That, actually, play a be... Friday night game. We'll see if more than twenty people show up for the Bruins. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, uh, that'll be definitely a test. I mean, even if it is only 20 Bruins fans, going on the road at any time and, you know, this when it's a team you're not sure exactly what you have, I mean, that, that's always a test. I mean, a solid UCLA team. And, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a time for them to really show because, I mean, they're the main main attraction, nothing else going up against them. So I, all eyes will be on Washington to show that they're for real. Well, yeah, for sure. And uh, UCLA's 4-0. Yeah, so, so, you know, haven't played yeah. the toughest schedule, but 4 0 is 4 So The interesting game. Big Friday night Pac-12 sure. game. We'll move down. We'll end in the state of Texas <laughs> for our recap. Uh, we had Texas going into Lubbock, speaking of weird places, like I said, losing to Texas Tech once again in that that got to overtime, yeah, right? Yes, overtime. that did get to overtime. Yeah, crazy ended. Texas Tech wins. Fans rush the field. Uh, my comment about this is maybe we don't need to boost a team for losing like we did Texas uh, after the Alabama loss. Everyone, they jumped into the top yeah. 25, had one of the biggest jumps ever. Yeah. I mean. Everyone hyping them up. Oh, you know, we didn't hear Texas is back yet, but close. <laughs> you know, hey, Sark's probably still got some work yeah. to do there. Uh, you know, Probably a thinner roster than they would like. Probably not as much talent, or at least not the talent he needs for his offense just quite yet. So, yeah. Uh, any thoughts on that game? I mean, Lubbock's always a tough place to go into. Uh, and even though it was the first time since that crazy Michael Crabtree game that they've actually won in, and they've given Texas fits in between that. So, I mean, you can always expect Lubbock and Texas coming in. It's going to be a entertaining game. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, the craziness, I mean, when they went down 10, I thought it was game over. You know, Tech Tech put up a good fight, but, you know, come back, scored that. And then to see B. John Robinson fumble the ball, crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, first play of overtime, too. <laughs> yeah, just uh, it's one of those weird things. Um, going up to... I guess Arlington, where that game was played, Arkansas and A&M played a good one with a weird ending. Uh, or a couple of big weird plays, actually. First, Arkansas went up, what, 14 nothing? Yeah. 14 nothing. A&M scored. Arkansas drove right back down, was about to take another 14-point lead. And he fumbled. Uh, K.J. Jefferson fumbled the ball, trying to reach it over the pile. A&M takes it back 98 yards for a touchdown. And that really flipped that really game. Did. A&M got some momentum from that. Arkansas could not get going again. Had a chance to win at the end. Again, clock management, a little weird. They didn't quite play for a field goal. You know, A&M's defense stepped up. But something I've never seen, the field goal hit off the top of the upright and bounced back uh, into the field of play for no good. A&M holds on to win a close one. That was just a weird game. Uh a weird ending, and we'll see how it affects a and or excuse me, Arkansas. They get Alabama at home next week, so we'll see if they're boned from it or if they're going to really come out firing, bounce back. Yeah, definitely, a, definitely a weird one. Um, and first, I like to say this is a game I want to see get to uh, home and home. Uh, I mean, I just uh, you want to see the atmosphere, at Kyle Field. You want to see the atmosphere and look. In uh, Fayetteville, um, playing at Jerry World was cool when they weren't in the same conference, maybe. But now that they are, get get to the home of home, guys. <laughs> yeah, I um, I saw somewhere I forget now, but the, it, it is the con because they signed 20, that initial contract for like ten or so yeah. games at Jerry World. You know, when they were, like you said in separate conferences, I think they might have one or two a more, more left. games left yeah. on that contract. And then, yeah, they will go to home and home. Like you said, that'll make that series, that, that kind of rivalry, really ramp up. Uh, anything else from yesterday you want to touch well, on? Well, I will say, you know, with Arkansas losing, I think that I think it actually becomes a more dangerous game for for the for Alabama. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure the guys will be ready to go because it's a big big time game at the two thirty spot. But I don't know when. The, uh, team like Arkansas coming off a close loss at at home in Fayetteville, 
dangerous, I think kind of a dangerous area to go into, but. Uh, for sure. And like you said, that is the big time CBS game next week, two thirty central time. Uh, yeah, we'll see big showdown for the, uh, Arkansas program and big showdown for the Alabama offense against that defense. Yeah. Uh, let's move into our power rankings for this week. Uh, I guess I'll kick it off at number 10. I got Oregon. Uh, Like I said, I just want to give them credit for the way they've bounced back after that Georgia loss. They got pounded by Georgia, managed three points, and they've scored now forty, at least 40 in three straight games. And like I said, a great comeback and a really tough place to play. Um, Who's your number 10? 10, uh, well, it's not the sexiest pick, but I got Penn State. Um, They're just 4-0 on the year, playing decent football. Wasn't a big win. I mean, it was a solid win yesterday against a not not a great team there, but uh, the back end of their schedule, back end of October for them is brutal. But right now they're playing playing good football, so I got them at 10. All right. How about your number nine? Number nine, I have the Wolfpack, NC State. Um, you know, they're a team that uh, blew out UConn yesterday. Of course, who doesn't do that? But, I mean, we'll find out. How real they are this coming up week going into Death Valley to play Clemson. That's, you know, their test, the one that they, if they're going to be the team that uh, some think that they can be, they, of course, have to get that big road win there. So we'll find out about the Wolfpack this coming up Saturday. Uh, We will, and that's also my number nine team. Uh, I echo everything you said. Like, next week's our litmus test on the Wolfpack. See if they're for real. See if Clemson's for real. Uh, number eight, I got the Volunteers of Tennessee. They've been impressive offensively. Uh, we already talked about what they got coming in the next few weeks. Uh, how about you? I have the same. I, you know, have Tennessee uh, with um, you know, with teams like Arkansas losing, OU losing. Got to move the balls up a little bit. Um, you know, they got the, you know, got the monkey off their backs, so you could say there. You know, we know that there's struggles with uh, the Gators over the last twenty years, so. You know, the big, big win for them. Well, they have the bye week coming up, and then, you know, they have some big games, uh, LSU and Alabama. If, you know, pull that's that'll let us know a lot about the Vols. But that, so far, I mean, those that offense is great. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. How about your number seven? Seven. Uh, got Kentucky at seven. Uh, not the prettiest of wins, but uh, a lot of time Kentucky doesn't win pretty. I guess you would expect a bigger win against so Northern Illinois there, but it is what it is. Uh, but uh, Wolf, another team at uh, going to Oxford coming up Saturday. That'll be a big game against Ole Miss. Uh, yeah, for sure. And uh, we're echoing each other, right? These last <laughs> couple picks. I also have uh, Kentucky. And my note said the same thing. We'll see. They go in Oxford. Uh, we'll see if their defense can slow down that Rebel offense and see if they can score some points on the Rebel defense. Uh, you know, the Rebels struggled a little bit they did. with uh, Tulsa yesterday. Kind of got out in front and then let Tulsa climb right. back into it. They closed it out. So, uh, big game next week. I think that's uh, 11 a.m. I think that's an early That's kick. 11 a.m. one? 11 a.m. Right. Central time. Yeah. Number six, I got the Trojans of USC. Um uh, we already kind of talked about them. How about you? I'm saying I have USC. I mean, they're just handling business. Got a solid road win. Defense look better. I mean, they they are who they are. We'll know about them on the what's that middle of the month when they play Utah. Uh huh. All right. How about your number five? Number five, I have Michigan, and that game uh, was. Uh, a lot closer than they, a lot of folks thought. You know, uh, Maryland hung around there. But, uh, you know, it's kind of shows maybe don't play all, all cupcakes in your first <laughs> three games there. Finally played a <laughs> Power 5 team and uh, had, didn't look as impressive, but they, you know, got a, a conference win there. So, and then uh, going to Iowa next week, Iowa's offense is terrible, but that's a tricky place to win sometimes. Yeah, indeed. Uh, this is where we got a little switch up finally. My number five is Clemson. Talked about them. Offense looked like it maybe got going again. Uh, we'll see how that defense responds. Tough test next week. Number four is where I have Michigan. Uh, same thoughts as you, you know, we kind of maybe expected him to come down to earth a little bit after those first three cupcakes, uh, Maryland, a decent team, solid team uh, at home. Uh, was impressed the way they, uh, 
closed it out with the running game. You know, passing game wasn't really working, so they went to what they do best, and yeah, it worked. You know, hey, two forty on the ground, most to, most uh, mm-hmm. running yards since since shoelace. <laughs> so definitely. Mm-hmm. For sure. Who is your number four? Number four, I have the Buckeyes. Um, okay. I, you know, I, I mean, it was an impressive blowout win, but I think Wisconsin's pretty bad there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Badgers seem to be having a down year. Who's your number three? Three, I actually have Clemson. I moved them up a little bit this week at the three spot. I mean, I just thought that that was an impressive, you know, road win. Um, you know, Wake Forest. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, they lost to Wake Forest. But if you watch, if you watch Wake Forest the last couple of years, I mean, that's been a great team. Sam Hartman's a heck of a quarterback, and to go into uh, Winston Salem, get the win there, when uh, there's a lot of questions about your own offense, I thought it was an impressive win and moved them up. Mm-hmm. All right, my number three, I got the Tide. Uh, Kind of same thing as last week. Offense looks good. How much do we really know? And your defense looked good too, ferocious. Just there's only so much you can really learn from UL Monroe and Vanderbilt. Uh, we'll see next week. My number two is where I have the Buckeyes. Uh, yeah, same sentiment. They're looking good, kind of rolling. I think they're a very talented team. Uh, yeah, how about your number two? Number two, I have Bama. And I mean, they completely mm-hmm. dominated yesterday against uh, Vanderbilt's. Uh, Heck of a first first half there, putting up points. Um, th- I liked how Bryce threw the ball all over the place. Um, got a lot of receivers involved, and I mean, you did what you're supposed to do, and uh, so we can continue that going into Fayetteville. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And then uh, pretty easy, both of us. Uh, Georgia number one. Not much we can probably say about that. They are just the defending champs and look like the best team this year. Anything you want to add? Uh, well, I mean, I guess like most people were probably uh, surprised by the way Kent State kind of hung around. You know, didn't really watch the game, but, you know, you look at it and you know, oh, it's a little closer than what you expected. But, you know, sometimes it's just hard to get up for teams at times. But they what they had to do. And, yep, Georgia, Georgia. So. <laughs> Yep, and that's about it for our college talk. We'll move to the NFL. Uh, before we get to our power rankings for that, I have a little mini rant. I'm going to go on real quick. <laughs> Last week, you know, that Browns-Jets game. Well, first of all, actually, before I even touch on that, it was funny when I went in to edit uh, last <laughs> Sunday night after we were talking we about them. the Ravens blowing out the we Dolphins. We did, man. We put the jinx on my boys bad. Uh, just oh, everything man. we talked about. It was, I actually had myself a good laugh. Oh, I was sitting man. there, uh, you know, sitting with my wife and laughing. She was looking at me like it was weird because I had my headphones on and everything. And I was just like, I couldn't even explain it to her. I'm like, just don't even worry. It's dumb. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so like, back to this. So as we all know, the the Browns blew a lead, 13-point lead under two minutes ago to the Jets. Joe Flacco and the Jets. And a lot of the talk this week is about Nick Chubb having that one play where he's running, got the oh first down, gosh. and then did not go down before he scored the touchdown. I am here to say, fuck that noise. I hate it. I hate that argument so much. It is Nick Chubb's job to score touchdowns. points. It is the offense's points to score points. And especially when you consider a lot of these skill players have incentive-laden contracts to where, you know, more touchdowns, more yards, he gets more money. I do not blame him for that. No. It is the defense's job to stop the offense from scoring. And Nick Chubb handed them a 13-point lead, should have been 14 because their their kicker missed the extra point, handed them a 13-point lead over the Jets and Joe Flacco's geriatric ass with like a minute 55 to go, and they blew it. Nick Chubb did not blow that game. I hate this whole discourse of runners should fall down. No, if you want to run out the clock, take a knee. If it's third down and you're trying to get the first down, it, you know, either just run it up the middle if that's all exactly. you want, or just accept it. If you score, defense has got to go to work now. Uh, that nobody, Nick Chubb, apologized. Don't apologize, oh, Nick. Man, that was the, get that, your money, get your points, first, man. That's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Ran over. That's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I saw the the article. Too. I was like, what? Why is Nick Chubb apologizing? I mean, it's not like they gave them a a minute thirty and they were 
up six at that point or something, going up against Tom Brady or something. We're talking about Joe Fl- Joe Flacco and the Jets. Like, game over. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, and they give up the big, long touchdown, and then they just let them drive exactly. right. They get the onside kick, and then they just drive right down. Yeah. No, that, that is not on Nick Chubb. <laughs> not at all. Stop with this discourse. <laughs> score your points offenses. Exactly. That is your job to score exactly. points. Exactly. My craziness. Like, yeah. Um. The only other thing I had in my NFL notes before the power rankings was fuck Brett Favre. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. It's about everybody's seen the news. We don't really need to get into it that, yeah. but that's just despicable. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's ever been a player, at least in our generation, that has ruined their goodwill oh as much God. as he has. And he was the um, guy that everybody, oh, he's kind of the gunslinger, the, the every day, every man, every guy type of guy. You can relate to him a little bit. And yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Not anymore. No. Uh, Ever since that Jets thing with that reporter, it's kind of gone downhill since. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, he has done more. I think I said on Twitter or something this week that the only person I could think of maybe a generation ahead of us would say would be O.J. Yeah. Simpson. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, so that's not a good level to get on there, no. bro. Uh, all right. Let's get into our NFL power rankings this week. Again, y'all, we record this on Sunday afternoons, so we are not taking into account the current games, really, If, as you can remember from last week in the Ravens debacle. Um, go ahead, start us off. Number eight. Well, number eight, you know, the, there's just – so I mean, there is a lot of teams you could put in that eight spot. Um, just because I mean, no, there's only really two short things in football right now. Well, maybe not even this week because some some teams are struggling above. But uh, number eight, I mean, I'm still, I still have the Vikings at eight. There, I mean, I still think they're a solid team there. They struggled on Monday Night Football, but I this there. Uh, their uh, talent level, they they shouldn't. I mean, it's not a bad thing to lose to Philly, but and I see that they're we're struggling with the Lions. I don't know what the score is right now, but uh, might be dropping them quickly. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got the Rams, the defending champs, at number eight. They did get a win over the Falcons, but and they had a big lead, and then the Falcons nearly came back and took it from them. Uh, my question for the Rams is, where's the run game, man? They did were not able to close that game out with a strong run game. Um, so that's tough for them. They need to find that run game in quick. Yeah. Uh, number seven, I got the Ravens after the aforementioned collapse. And as I'm watching them right now, they look like they might be doing the same against the Patriots. Uh, I, I do want to say, though, uh, you know, reading all the Ravens fans' reaction, uh, th- there's no need to panic. It was a very bad loss, horrible loss. You can't blow a 21 point fourth quarter lead. That's no argument there. But it's the second. It was the second week of the season. Lamar played great. Rashad Bateman is showing signs that he is going to be a true number one receiver, and they're still not healthy in the secondary, on the line, and the running backs. You know, they still. You know, they need Ronnie Stanley back. Mm-hmm. I think they had another lineman go down today. Uh, Marlon Humphrey last week was in and out of that game. And against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, that's tough when you got Marcus Peters in his first game back, Marlon Humphrey in and out, and then two rookies, you know, trying to cover three, actually, if you count the safety. It's just – it's not time to panic yet, Ravens fans. Like, this is ridiculous, calling for John Harbaugh's head, all that stuff. No, like, horrible loss, yes, but week two – and there's a lot of still positive signs to take from it. Um, even, you know, uh, what's it, Armour Davis, the the cornerback who Jalen Waddle caught the game-winning touchdown mm-hmm. over, he actually played it really well. Yeah. He was right there. Uh, Tua made a great pass, threw it up high. Jalen was able to go up and get it. Uh, yeah, who's your number seven? Seven, I have the Rams. I mean, um, came back, got the win last week. It wasn't the prettiest, but, uh, you know, the Rams – Still have still a talented team there. Had you know, kind of took a big hit from that week one, and people are like, oh, they're falling apart. I mean, they still have, they're still the Rams, yeah. But like you said, that running game has to get better. Like, I don't understand like how you have a talented running back, Cam Akers. I mean, they got to figure that out. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's sorely something they need to figure out quickly. Uh, who's your number six? 
Uh, number six, uh, I have, I'm just going to throw them in there because I think it's funny that they're undefeated right now. But, I mean, the Giants playing good football. <laughs> I, I absolutely can't stand them. And uh, my team is playing them tomorrow night, actually. But, I mean, they're, they're a team that, uh, you know, I think that with a healthy Saquon Barkley, they're a dangerous team. <laughs> he can stay healthy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, if he's a, that's a, a you know, he probably – you know, going back, maybe you don't take him second in the first round, you know, running back these right. days, even as good as he is. But he really does add completely different dimension to that offense when he's healthy, and it opens things up for them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my number six, I had the Packers. They bounced back with a win. Aaron Rodgers looked good. I mean, you just got to give them credit. Uh, they probably still got some things they need to figure out. But, uh, you know, in Aaron we trust, I guess, you <laughs> know, until he shows us, you know, right. gives us a reason not to. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, my number five, mm-hmm. I had the Eagles. And our boy Jalen Hurts had a great game, game Monday night. They're having a good game this afternoon so far. Uh, they look like he looks like he's they found the right offense for him. Uh, AJ Brown was a great pickup. Uh, defense is looking solid. Uh, yeah, who's your number five? Oh uh, well, I have the I have the Ravens at the five spot. Uh, you know, they uh, of course we all know about the debacle that fourth quarter last week um uh, don't know what they're doing at the moment there uh not at the tv but i know they were uh, back and forth with uh with the with the patriots but i mean they're still a good team like you said they're not healthy or fully there but when they get healthy and they can stay healthy they're 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 a great team so ravens there uh yeah to answer your question i got it on red zone right here they actually just marlon humphrey just picked off a pass in the end zone mm, okay uh, so they are up thirty-one to twenty-six, okay. I believe. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they'll time, get the ball uh, back there. Lamar throwing a pick, and I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> for, yeah, the, and there was a questionable. The Patriots had the ball there for a questionable fumble. He threw it to Bateman, and Bateman kind of caught mm-hmm. it and got hit and lost the ball at the same time. But then they they ruled it a fumble instead of completion. But we'll see. Ravens <laughs> got the ball back, stopped from scoring. There's about I think what eight minutes mm-hmm. or so left in that game. All right, who was your number four? Number four, I have the Miami Dolphins. Um, you know, just, you know, big, they dominated week one, came got the big road win last week. I know uh, Saw Tua got hurt again. This is a bad thing, but uh, so far, um, and they've done what they need to do. That offense seems to suit him. They got two playmakers, kind of more the format of what he had at Bama. You know, with two two good wide receivers, and they're playing to his strengths. So hopefully, he can come back and be healthy because he went out with that head injury. I don't know what his status is currently, but I saw he went out, and I was like, my goodness, this man had it's the most unlucky guy in. I don't know, almost like the Derrick Rose of the NFL. He can't stay healthy for any reason. Mm-hmm. I believe he actually did make it back into the game. Did he? Um, oh, nice. I think I saw him, yeah, like I said, I got a red zone, so they're not on that game right, right now. But, uh, yeah, I believe he did get back in the okay. game and actually made a big, deep pass okay. to uh, to Jalen again. So I think he's all right. All right yeah, just a little concussion scare. They probably just had to check him yeah, out. Yeah, because sure I saw good. him come across two and went out with the injury. I was like, oh, and then say, hey, I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you just hate it. Yeah, I also have the Dolphins at number four. Uh, same reasons as you, they – I mean, with those two guys, Hill and Waddle, on the field, that just whew, that is going to tire out a lot of defenses. And if they add, you know, they really haven't even uh, played around a lot with their two running backs, yeah. uh, Edmonds and Mostert. There, uh, those are two other dangerous weapons. And of course, Kaseki at tight end. That, that's a Talented a lot team. of weapons on that team. And yeah. I don't know if we've really seen the full complement of that offense yet. Uh, number three, I stayed in Florida. I got the Bucks. Tom Brady. That defense looking good again. You know, he was frustrated. Apparently broke two tablets last week in the Superdome in the win over the Saints. And of course, Mike Evans getting suspended. You know, that rivalry getting chippy. But uh, how about <laughs> your number three? Number three this week, I have the Eagles. Um, they look good. Um, you know, came on Monday Night Football. Um, and they shut down Justin Jefferson completely. I mean, forced uh, – uh, cousins in the what three, three or four picks there, and I mean Jalen's Jalen. 
put up numbers. I mean, that first half, I mean, he looked like an MVP candidate. I mean, just running the ball, throwing the ball. You know, definitely a uh, big improvement going from Rager to A.J. Brown there as the uh, other number one there. So <laughs> definitely uh, impressive, impressive team so far. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, uh, who's your number two? Two, I have the Chiefs. Um, they were my one last week, but I had to move them down. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they're um, – they are, you know, just the, the the they're the team to beat for sure in the AFC West. There, um, so they're just who they are until someone beats them. Mm-hmm. Which would make the Bills your number one? Yes, sir. Which would mean we have the same two and one. I also have Chiefs two, Bills one. Uh, yeah, Chiefs are the Chiefs. They're looking good. They actually kind of struggling more than you would think they are yeah. with the Colts right now. Yeah, the Colts. <laughs> uh, the Colts are in desperation mode though, so can't blame yeah. that. Um, yeah, that's a that's and a. And the Bills, the Bills are just looking really strong. They had a, another big win last week. Uh, that offense is just humming. Um, I think they are actually. It looked like Miami just took the lead on mm, them a couple minutes ago. So that's a tough game down there, in Miami. Right. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Josh Allen is everything that we think he is, and that team is just – they're really good. Anything to add? Well, talking about the, uh, you know, the uh, Chiefs struggling with the Colts there, I mean, that's a team, you know, big, big expectations at him at Ryan. And the fact that last week, I mean, dropped 23 nothing to the Jags. I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> I know the Jags are probably a, an improved team, but, man, when you're the supposed to be the favorite in that <laughs> – and you're missing pieces, supposed to be Matt Ryan to drop it like that. My goodness, they've gotten off to a very slow start there. <laughs> yeah, they are up 17 13 with six and a half minutes as we record this. Uh, looks like the Colts just converted a fourth and one. Mm-hmm. Matt Ryan getting a sneak, get old man getting in there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll see how that one turns out. Yeah, like I said, sure. uh, it might be one of these early season NFL is weird like that. You know, they're yeah. all professional teams. Um, yep. It just might be a case the Colts are desperate. They can not zero and three start three, yeah. bad. Well, I guess it's, but um, yeah. yeah, you expect the Chiefs to uh, to do better here. Well, let's see, red zone switching to the Ravens on a third down here. See how this goes. A little live commentator. Let's see, shotgun formation. Lamar gets a snap, goes back, throws the ball a little high. Be fourth down. They'll give the ball back to the Patriots. Mm-hmm. But all right, that ends our NFL talk. We'll end, let's see, last topic this week. The Celtics, ooh, like out of nowhere, big surprise, uh, suspended their coach, um, Ime it's Yudoka, I don't want to mispronounce that, for the whole season uh, based on, they just said, multiple, multiple violations of team policy, uh, they did not give us any more than that officially. Big rumors about, you know, a consensual affair with another staff member. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, I don't really want to go into the social media, the Twitter rumor machine, because who knows really what's going on. Right. They did say it just came multiple violations of team policy uh, after a month's long investigation. So that is, you know, it came out of nowhere, big shock, because he was riding high. That franchise was riding high after making – the finals after that horrible start to their season, they really turned it around or maybe the hottest team going into the playoffs, um, you know, just ran into, you know, a Warriors team on a mission, but uh, man, uh, how, how's this going to affect their season this year? You know, just from the, you know, I think it's one of those things you either, you either fire the guy or you just run with them as is and maybe change your policy to have, because supposedly they've known about it for a while, and it just became, uh, uh, you know, known known to us there, of course. Um, I guess, like, uh, you know, if uh, if he broke policy, and you know, that's and with uh, some of the issues with other things with the in the in the, and with the in the, in the NBA with uh, sexual harassment, everything with Phoenix on to that nature. I mean, you almost think. Do, I guess cut ties with them because if you have them sent a whole year, 
are you really going to bring him back next year? <laughs> like, I don't know. I think it, I don't know if Boston handled it the best as far as, you know, I, I would have either A, cut ties with them or kind of kept it quiet and just, you know, kept them, kept them as the coach or have them sit a whole year and then maybe bringing them back. I mean, I think that's a whole another can of worms that maybe could have been eliminated. But we'll, we'll see. I think there's a lot more to the story that we'll find out once it's uh, – there's just so many, so many rumors. Uh, you know, the other thing, talking about the social media aspect, I mean, they had a, 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 a first lady they had in the pictures says supposedly the woman wasn't even the woman. That was the worst part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you really hate that part of that whole, uh, 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 like, like I said, social media, just rumor mill. Everyone turns into an investigator all of yeah. a sudden, and detectives. Because there was this picture of a don't spread these people yeah. these people's pictures online, man. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, and she wasn't even I get a it. woman. We all want to know <laughs> like, the juicy gossip, and we do want to know the full story. Like, you know, multiple team violations doesn't really tell us much. You know, is he right. harassing? Was this actually not consensual? You know, those are things that, in the end, maybe we should know. But like you said, it's also weird that they just suspended him for a whole season. Didn't cut ties. There was a report that maybe he offered to resign and they didn't take it or something. It's it's a weird situation. Um, yeah. How it'll affect them on the court, we don't really know yet. Uh, they lost their uh, top assistant to uh, the yeah, Jazz, to Danny U- Ainge. Yeah, went to Utah. Them. Yeah. Yeah, Danny Ainge Either blocked them. Coach. So we'll see what they got. Still a credibly talented team, obviously. Talented team. And- um, but, yeah, so that that's interesting going forward uh, as we – Get closer to the NBA season. Yeah, I guess preseason should be starting up. Yeah, sometime real soon next week, right? Uh, right. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Just a weird story all around. Just everything about it. The the undisclosed things. The the nature of it. How we don't really know anything. And then, like you said, the decision not to cut ties with them and to suspend them for a whole season. Um, just an odd, odd story. Uh, anything else in the world of sports you want to touch on this week? Uh, not a, not a whole lot. I think we pretty much got a lot of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I guess baseball. We did hit Albert. Got his seven hundred home run. Uh, yeah. Good for him. Um, Judge well, it really is, you know, <laughs> sixty. And <laughs> I know uh, that was the other thing. I guess a lot of people <laughs> were pretty upset. You know, every every pitch they break into the college football <laughs> yesterday with the oh yeah Aaron no, Judge yeah. watch. <laughs> I saw a lot of bitching on Twitter about that yeah. yesterday. Uh, even from Yankees fans themselves yeah. being like, hey, man, this is Saturday. Like, it, right. don't cut it into this game, man. Like, do at least a picture in picture, you know? <laughs> and then they uh, went with their audio, too. That was even fun. Oh, yeah, that's the crazy thing. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's weird. It's a great accomplishment for Judge. You know, he's having yeah. an amazing season chasing the triple crown, obviously chasing the, uh, the mayor's home run record. But as long as the NFL still keeps – you know, Bonds as the record holder, I mean, what are we really – it's exciting. 60 home runs is awesome, but Judge mm-hmm. isn't chasing a record, you know, just yet, you know. Yeah. At least a major league record, you know. Uh, so, hey, yeah, we'll record. see what he does in the last couple of weeks, how <laughs> yeah. close he gets. But, uh, yeah, I, I, that discussion, you know, I, I, it is – I think that's just subjective. Either you recognize Bonds or you, you know – hate the steroids part. Uh, my take on it is, oh, oh, Dolphins just missed a game ceiling interception there. Hmm. Uh, my take on that whole situation, just real quick, is look, it wasn't technically against MLB rules right. when McGuire and Sosa and Bonds were taking all these supplements and whatnot, muscle exactly. enhancers, or steroids, whatever you want to call them, HGH. And while we're there, the the – the part that really just annoys me the most of everything is all these sanctimonious writers and baseball writers are the worst. Just talking about they ruined the game. They should be stricken from the record books. Motherfuckers. Y'all were loving more than anybody celebrating them in the moment. You know, I remember that summer of McGuire and Sosa. I remember the bonds chases. It was the only thing on sports center. It was the only thing on TV, any sports program. It was was all you saw. TV. Mm Mm-hmm. They were yeah, having that race, good. and they would just come back from the, you know, baseball lost the grace of the fans after the strike in 94, and that, mm-hmm. without that, I mean, baseball, 
would be even further back than what it is now. So yeah, you 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 won because of it, and now you I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, now you just you want to outlaw them and Clemens and all them from the record books, and it's like no, you you. I mean, it's part of the story. <laughs> exactly. Just like, report the whole story. Just you know, if you want to put a special wing put in the Hall of Fame or whatever for them, cool. you know, be like, hey, yeah. this is the steroid era. You know, like all these guys were on it until MLB updated their rules for it. That's fine. But then, That's but then, what you should do. Yeah, but you know, I mean, like even then, about, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Matt. I was saying that even then, it opens up a whole nother can of worms because if it's called the steroid era, then you look at it. Well, who was on? Who wasn't? Who was? Who mm-hmm. wasn't? And then you look at other people's records and you're wondering, well, was this guy clean? Was this guy not clean? I just say let it all go, and just you know put the guys in. I mean, we all know Barry Bonds. If he had never went to San Francisco, he's a he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Just off he, his yeah, if you school. look at his stats uh, up until like it was kind of obvious that you know his head grew and all that steroid stuff, he was right. still had Hall of Fame numbers before all that. Exactly, he was just didn't get the recognition because of McGuire and Sosa and Griffey guys like that. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, like you exactly. said, it's t- it's it's just a weird thing. You can talk about it. It's okay to talk about it, guys. We don't need right. to wipe this from the record books. That's not a healthy way to yeah. deal with things. We all uh, we all saw it happen. <laughs> like, if, yeah. <laughs> The yeah. equivalent of the NCAA, uh, you know, taking uh, Reggie Bush's Heisman, yeah, taking Reggie Bush's Heisman or happened. vacating wins. It's like, no, we we, we were saw there. The wins. I, I saw it us. Happened. We won the game. We saw who won exactly. You don't. Yeah, who cares if that a, player didn't pay for his textbook? You know, that's yeah. not a re, that did not help that team win that game that exactly. day. Exactly. You, know? you guys don't have the men in black stick to make us forget. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're not erasing our memory. This isn't eternal sunshine in the spotless exactly. mind here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's all ridiculous, but yeah. Uh, so good for Judge, good for pool holes, good for baseball uh, as they get closer to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, man. Uh, then our last thing, as usual, what has been done up real good for you this week? You know, done up real good. Um, you know, just being around it's a tough time, but just being around family, you know, just to you know see people that you don't see a lot, able to bond with folks. It was just uh, you know, good to see people. For sure, for sure. Uh, what about you? And I'll probably say the same thing. You know, done up real good. Family, fall weather finally creeping in here in Birmingham. <laughs> Hopefully to stay. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, just uh, and again, we've said it. I think every week, but football has just been great this year, both yeah, college every, and pro. Like even when the lineups just, don't look great, the games have ended up being spectacular. Exactly. Like. And even like this, yeah, both the college football and NFL this week, you're allowed on paper, you're like, eh. But watch, I mean, we had some epic ones. I'm sure we're having some epic endings. Yeah, it's about 3 o'clock. I'm sure we're about to see some epic endings here, some upsets possibly. I mean, that's just uh, oh. the joy of football right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, as we, uh, you know, TD's up-to-date ticker for at least me and Greg, and then when you guys listen to this tomorrow, you'll – Wonder why we're given breaking news, but it looks like Chicago is about to attempt a game winning field goal. Maybe even bigger news. I just got a score alert on the phone. Ravens scored a touchdown. Justin Ticker, Ticker, Justin Tucker missed an extra point. Wow. The apocalypse is nigh. <laughs> Run for cover. Yeah. Get wow. the high ground. Uh, but that is it, folks. Thank you once again for tuning in. Greg, have a great week, buddy. Well, I will buddy. see you next week. Next Sunday. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm.